Hello everyone, this is Jordan Berry, Instructional Designer at Hack, and today we're going to look at how to create modules in D2L to organize your instructional content. So D2L allows instructors to share content with students like their syllabus, PowerPoint presentations, instructional videos, articles, virtually any file, document, or resource that you want your students to have can be uploaded and shared in D2L for the students to access at any time. So the first thing we're going to look at is creating modules and submodules. Modules are like file folders in your filing cabinet or on your computer. They serve as a way to organize your course content and information in a meaningful way for students. So just like in a face-to-face -face class, we want to guide our students through the course content and coursework to create a meaningful learning experience for them. And we do this using modules and submodules to organize that course content, ultimately creating a learning path for students that guides them toward mastering the learning objectives. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is go to the content area. And to do that, we'll click on the content button in the nav bar. And we'll notice that there's a sidebar and table of contents on the left hand side. And there's a main area on the right hand side. The left hand sidebar is where you're going to create and organize your modules. And the main area displays the content that's inside of each of them. So we're going to click on this area here that says add a module to create a new one and we'll input the module's name and press enter or return. And that's it. Your first module is created. Now there's a number of ways that we can organize our course materials and it's ultimately up to you um, and how you feel is best going to serve your students or your course. Some instructors break down their content by weeks, others by units. And the biggest tip to remember is to be consistent. So if you do something for one week, try to maintain that same consistency throughout all the weeks in your course. So now that I have my module that's labeled week one, I want to put some content inside. And before we do that, I'm going to create a few sub modules to organize the content further. I'll create a sub module called content that will contain all the readings and the videos and another one called assessments where I'll put the quizzes and assignments for that week's work. To do that, I'll click on add a sub module here in the main content area. There, now my module and submodules are all set up for week one. If I'm going to use this structure for week one, I'll have to do the exact same thing for each week to remove any guesswork for students. The last thing we want for them to worry about is where to find information in your course or what order they should read the resources in. So I would create a week two and those two same submodules, content and assessments within it. It's as simple as that. So the next thing we're going to do is upload our syllabus. And to do this, we're going to create a start here module that will sit at the top of all the other modules. This module will direct the students to important course information like the syllabus, your calendars, or any other important course information first. To reorder a module, we'll click and hold the eight dots and drag it to the top or wherever you'd like it to go. So now that it's at the top where students can see it, I'm going to add my syllabus. So we'll see that start here is now showing in the main area when we click on it in the left hand side over here on the sidebar. Now there's nothing in it, but we'll change that by clicking new. So we'll see a drop down appear and all of the options that D2L offers for adding content will be listed on this drop down. So you'll see we can add files, video or audio. We can create a file, a link, as well as many other options. For our purposes today, we'll select upload files. Next, we'll pick my computer and then upload. And then we'll search for where that syllabus exists on your computer. We'll choose it and then click open. You'll see it appear here and then you'll click add. Now it's going to appear in that module or submodule that you uploaded it to for all the students to access at any time. This will be the same process for adding any file, whether it's a PowerPoint, a document, an image, or an audio file. You can use this same method. Next, say you found an article that you want the students to read that will help support their learning. We can add that link into our module area as well. So to do that, we're going to go to the web page that we want to share with the students and copy that URL. So we'll left click on the address to select it all, then right click and select copy. 
Now we'll head over to our D2L module that we wanted in. Let's say week one, and then the content area. And this is where we'll put the link. So we'll click on new, and then we'll click on link. And we'll give that link a title. So whatever you want the students to see, this is what you'll enter here. And then you're going to right click in this area here where it says URL and click paste so that the link shows up. Okay, next you'll click create and the link will appear in your D2L shell. Now let's say I want to add a YouTube link. Maybe you found a great instructional video or you created one yourself or you recorded one of your Zoom lectures and uploaded it to YouTube. It's an identical process. We'll go to YouTube and click the share button. Then copy that link and we'll go back to our D2L shell. Go to the module we want. Again, week one and then the content area and then click new. Create a link. And you'll give it a title again that you want the students to see. And you'll right click and paste and input that link into the URL area. And we'll hit create. And there it is. Up here we'll see a small navigation link where we can jump back to the main area. Now we'll see our YouTube link in the main content area. And say we want to move things around a little bit in a certain order. We want the YouTube link to come first because we want to create that learning path for students. Well, we can do that by clicking and holding those eight dots and then dragging that object up or down to reorder it. Now, last thing, another thing that we can do is add our assessments, our quizzes, our Dropbox items, or discussion posts to this area to create a more meaningful learning experience for students. And instead of having them go up to that tab to find those assignments and when they're due, we can simply add it to this module where it belongs. So after they complete the readings and viewing all the content, they can work on the assignment that will appear next in their content area here. So this is going to work only if you already have a quiz or a Dropbox or discussion post created, but let's check it out. So in this module, we want the quiz for our purpose, week one, and then the assessment sub-module. We'll click on the Add Existing Activities button, and we'll see the options appear that we can choose from, and we'll add quiz. So we are going to select quizzes. Then a list of all the quizzes that we created appears, and I will select which one I want to add, and there we go. Now it appears in that sub-module. Now one last bit of information for the content area. Say you only want to show a certain module at a time, the one that students are supposed to be currently working on, and you don't want them to skip ahead so that um, no one gets ahead of another student and we keep a consistent pace for all the learners. We can do that. Uh, we can do that by hiding and revealing modules to students. Firstly, by clicking this little eye icon here and clicking the button so that the check mark is removed and now we'll see that this module is hidden. Alternatively, we can click add dates and restrictions to input the dates and times that you want the module to show up for students and then again to disappear. Okay, let's add our dates here. And once we're, we're done, we'll hit update and we'll notice that the due date and start date appear here and also under the module name as well. This helps students stay on track and know when certain assignments and readings are due. All right, so that is the basics of creating modules and sub-modules and organizing your content in D2L. Hope you found it useful. Don't ever hesitate to reach out to the CDI team for more help and information. Take care.